Hi, and welcome to Business as Usual. I'm Danine O'Donnell, and I am so excited today to welcome Brian and Marina Frenchak. We are at the Penn Theater in Butler, and I am just so thrilled to see something being going on here. And let's, let's go back, way back in the day, um, when this theater got started. Can you give us a little bit of an idea of how this whole theater got started? Well, my understanding is there ended up being six theaters in Butler at the time, or, and they came at different points, but the pen was different and it withstood all the other theaters because it ended up with a air conditioned area, oh. which was a geothermal well that went down 230 feet. So that was kind of cool and made it totally unique. Yeah. And then there was, um, and that was built by Dilt Knight Miller and that was 1937 but then wow. they had a delay on opening in 38, and I'll let Marina speak to that. Um, well, um, they did have a delay in 1938. The uh, union went on to strike, so uh, for what we have in the old newspapers, they had to change the movie, um, and then it did open. Yeah. So kind of got off on the wrong foot back way back then. But I remember bringing, I'm not from Butler, so I didn't grow up here, but my children were raised here. And I remember bringing my son, I'm going the 1990s and coming, we'd sit at the little tables that were in the back because he was restless and that was a great way to have the bigger kids watch the movie and he could sit at the tables. So about when did the theater go out of business? When did it close down? I'm not sure exactly. I think there were two different times. Okay. That, it, that that happened, I know because I, well, I, I had been coming here since I was a child, so since 1960 on, yeah. and then left in 78, um, left Butler for a while, but the, uh, I, th I think it was or mid-2000, okay. yeah, and then it was revitalized, they tried to get it back up uh, here somewhere uh, a few years later, but was, was not successful. It's just not been successful and it's sort of been um, uh, the heart of the community and it's sort of been an eyesore and I'm so excited that you have come in to the rescue and Marina we were talking a little bit about how you sort of fell in love with Butler and so I'm kind of curious about how this whole thing got started because I walk into this theater you showed us around a little bit and I'm fascinated but I'm instantly overwhelmed and a person like me would say oh my goodness it's so, there's there's no hope but you saw something different so tell us a little bit about how it got started with the two of you well um, we came to visit when we met about 10 years ago and I was walking around Main Street and I am a theater and performance arts lover and I peeked in through the doors and I saw this abandoned place that must have had all this history that I started researching at the time. Uh, I fell in Balbatlo with so much heart that Brian and I opened a restaurant in Texas called the Butler House. And actually the back uh, office space looks like but Main Street Butler. Wow. When we heard that years later, last year, that they were going to just demolish the theater, um, Brian, like, we listened to each other and understood that a place that had opened their doors with a reason of bringing communities together, different generations, families, spending time, that was not the right way to move forward with a place like this. So Brian um, started making a lot, a lot of phone calls. And when we got this place, I realized we were going to be very, very questioned about the reasons why. What we did, when we did it, and the reason why. And I suddenly like, prayed about it and understood with Brian that before anybody could question us, when you love something or you love somebody, the first word that should come into your heart is protection. And this theater had been bullied for so many years with no protection. To know that we were going to be leaving 48 hours after signing for the theater, and there was still a big hole uh, where it was going to rain and snow and graffitis in the roof. In the roof uh, Brian, and this is an amazing man, Brian had that roof covered and we could go to bed. Moving forward to the future. Very nice. Now, 
what is your, and you probably get asked this all the time, what is your vision for the theater? What do you see occurring? What's your plan? Well, let me, let me say ahead. something first and then I'll let him. Okay. Uh, we had a lot of plans, but we want the community to help us plan. Oh, good. Because we can want a lot of things, but so many people have come in and out that we're still trying to figure exactly what, but through the feedback of the people that have so many stories or what they miss or what they need. Okay. So you can mention some of them. <laughs> Correct. And so it's, yes, yeah, you take care of the community, the community will take care of you. That's and so, so we started thinking about what is the, the right thing to do. And we don't know what we don't know. So, so therefore, you know, we all have a lot of ideas and, and just a few of those are, you know, we want to bring back, you know, that sense of community. So we want it to be interactive in, in what we present and the actual events that happen here. So, it, you know, it will be, you know, maybe once a month we'll have a, a large concert on the weekends. You'll have a, a more of a local band. We'll have comedy acts. We'll have a dinner theater, have things that will be, Interactive it could be it'll be the or it could be orchestra or a little theater or a uh, fashion runway. A fashion runway. We're involved with a lot of different nonprofits and ministries, and so we want to be able to help and host some of those those galas and things of that nature. So, like the old dinner theater, you know, you'll yeah. we'll have that. And the venue is just unique in the fact that uh, the height of it. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you know, we're about 25, 30 foot tall. So that leaves great opportunity for different things that uh, we're not ready to share yet, but there's things that some of the new technology with uh, uh, the interactiveness of you know, cameras and audio that can make it really unique and not only help bring back this essence of it for downtown Butler, but make it a destination spot. Yes. Is the like from, yes, like from vintage to contemporary. Yes. Because I know that a lot of grandparents or parents would love to have their grandchildren come and see or experience something in a different way. You know, yes. and, we, and, you know, and I didn't even mention the, the screen, right? The big screen. So it's not that it's going to be a, not going to be a big screen. We will have some of those okay. movies and those vintage movies. And so everybody that comes in, uh, and is looking at it saying, wow, there's so much work here to be done. There is, but we're going to get it done. And the, you know, everybody has a story of the first movie they saw. They, they said, oh, this is the last movie I saw here. This was the first. We had a lady came in and she ran the ticket booth oh, and, you know, right. for, for like 20 years. You know, it's yeah. a, it's always like, it was just a lot of great stories. A lot of Butler has seen a great improvement. Things in ch have been changing with buildings, businesses coming in. And one of the big things is the Penn Theater has always been such a big, with the big lights and things, such a big part. So what, what are your plans for the facade, for the outside of the theater? Do you see it as seeing is staying a lot like people remember it from the past, or do you see it completely changing? I think a little of both, but let me back up to what you, the first part of your question statement was about how things are changing in Butler, and we're excited to be part of that change. We're seeing the different things that are happening. Uh, the, the Rotary Club has started the Cultural District, and the Cultural District that goes all the way from the Phillips Mansion uh, on one end, on the north end, to it ends at the Penn Theater, ironically, at the South End. So now, because it's the cultural district and, and, and the history behind it, when we were, and I want to be thankful to the Pis, uh, Pittsburgh History and Landmark Group, they're the ones that kept the place alive and gave the mortgage for it initially uh, in the 20s or in the 2000s. Okay. And uh, when they did that, they wanted to preserve the culture of the front the facade and the marquee of the building is what we wanted anyhow. So as we ne negotiated that when we purchased uh, the theater, and we said that we would go ahead and would keep it as, as original and historical as possible. But with that being said, we, you know some of the things will change with maybe some of the lighting, or a little bit of LED on the marquee. But we want to keep the, some of the old bulbs. We're going to keep some of the old, we're going to keep you know, almost all of the facade. 
The oh, neon that, that you see up there where it says pen, uh, there's some really cool colors that come with that neon. So, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting, be, it's gonna be fun. Behind us, you can see the theater where the movies were shown, but some people remember doing things upstairs in this building too, like a little theater or, do you have plans for the upstairs? Yeah, that was the, uh, the Bantam uh, Theater and it was built in the 60s. And so there are some, there are some, you can't see them here, but there were some little like private boxes. We could view the main theater, but they also, there's 125 seats that view the other direction. And so those, that, that area will be an area where we'll be able to have a private event. It could be a, a corporate meeting where Tech there's a, 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 like a TED talk. It could be, it, nice. it could be a, a soloist or a duet that's up there. So it's, it a yes, and, th and that's 125 seats. So that would be able to handle, you know, you could be going on at the same time as an event is going on here in the main theater. And so the main theater, I didn't really elaborate on, but uh, with uh, the, the way we're changing it, the, you know, as with most theaters, when you walk in the front doors, it dropped down about five and a half feet to the front stage. It sloped down for, for viewing purposes. Yeah. And so we're changing that. We're making it three levels. So an upper, a middle, and a lower level. The upper level, there will be a, a full bar area there. And then the middle level will be the main seating area, which can accommodate tables and chairs. And then the lower level will have the stage and then more of a VIP area on either side of the stage, whether you have a runway there or you have the main, what they call it, it's a thrust stage or an ego stage that can, that can be malleable where the stage can either be wide and shallow or it can thrust out and be long and narrow. And the seats are approximately you know, 275 sit down with tables and chairs and then we'll end up with, if it's just for a big show or concert or theater or viewing, it would be 400 seats. I heard you talk a little bit outside about the two buildings on either side. I think one was the cigar shop maybe at one time. Um, and I think you have plans to sort of incorporate that hopefully into this building also? Yes, there's a, a mobile phone place on one side and there was a, a, a barber shop in the other. So we'll, we'll incorporate those in some way, shape or form with an office or with the food or cigar shop. Maybe like it was before, we've still got the old banner, the old uh, awning for the cigar shop that was there. Now you guys have, uh, I can tell, been putting a lot of work into it already and it, it what what do you think your time frame is? Um, what when do you hope that this will be finished? Our hopes are you know September October. Wow, and that's fast too. So you have a lot of work, and with movies and shows comes food and drinking. So how do you envision that? Do you think that you might work with other breweries or places in the in town, or what do you see? Uh we're absolutely going to work with other uh, places Restaurants. in town because well, with this is going to be like a, it's going to be like a canvas for anybody's event or anybody's movie. So if we have an Italian movie festival, for example, we can cater the Italian food. If we have a German movie festival or if somebody wants to have a wedding. So, you know, so it's going to be like a canvas of, of for everybody's art and partnering with our with our neighbors and with other people in the hospitality business, I think that will bring us even closer to each other. Yeah, so we've, we've, we're working on the liquor license and we're pretty sure that it's gonna, not gonna be a problem. Uh, and and so, so we're pretty sure that that's gonna happen in the next couple of months. We'll have that, so we'll have the food, the, that take care of some of the drinking side of it. But on the, on the food side of things, we'll have probably snack, food or things of that nature internally, but externally, what Marina was alluding to was we want to help work together. So we want to, when we have meals or we have sit down dinner or dinner theater, we want to be catering from within the community and working together. I think it's wonderful that you are embracing the community and I'm so happy to have had a chance to come in and find out a little bit about the scoop of what's gonna happen here. 
I, I appreciate your love for Butler and, and folks, I know we're all looking forward to see what happens here at the Penn Theater. So as we always said in the cable business, stay tuned because we're all looking forward to what you do here and the life that you bring back to it. Well, thank you all for caring and having us. It, it's having been such here. a pleasure and for Armstrong, this has been Danino Donnell with Business As Usual. Thanks for watching this episode of Business As Usual. If you want to see more, just click on the playlist button up here. To keep up to date with all the shows from the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel, you can click on the subscribe button down here. See you next time.